Are you truly a disciple of Jesus, or are you just a Christian going with the flow, living an easy religious life, expecting Jesus to do everything for you, but without actually giving much back to him? It's a big question, right? And it's a very uncomfortable one as well. But Jesus does have expectations on us if we want to be a disciple of his. And to explore that idea, we're going to look together at Luke 14 verses 25 to 34. Now, this is not a new problem. It's true of every generation that there have been Christians who are are really passionate about serving God and working for his kingdom. And there are others who have just sort of drifted along as Christians, not really working on their discipleship, but wanting Jesus to meet them in their every need and keep them comfortable in life. And that was even true in Jesus' day as well. In Luke 14, 25, it says that a large crowd was traveling with Jesus. Jesus was a popular teacher and miracle worker, and people just loved to be around him. They'd heard his great sermons. They'd seen him feed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves. They'd seen him calm a storm. They'd seen him perform miracles and heal people. So there was a great crowd following Jesus, not really committed to him, but just curious about the man and wanting wanting to see him in action and maybe get their own needs sorted out along the way as well. Now Jesus could have pandered to that. I mean, how amazing would it be to have a great crowd follow you everywhere, hanging on your every word and getting wowed at your spiritual powers? Jesus could have pandered to that and got the crowd to grow and grow and grow as more people became his followers. But he doesn't do that. Instead, he's brutally honest about the cost of following him. You see, Jesus isn't interested in having a large church full of comfortable believers. He wants committed disciples who will take the hard road and work for his kingdom, transforming the world and being fully engaged in a relationship of love with him. So if you want an easy life, Christian discipleship probably isn't for you. But what does Jesus expect from his disciples? What does he expect from you and me? Well, firstly, that we need to put our faith over our family. Wow, that's a tough one right there. Verse 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, such a person cannot be my disciple. Is he really calling us to hate our family? No. What he's saying is, is that we should love God so much. We should love Jesus so much. We should be so passionate in our relationship with God that any other relationship of love that we have on earth would look like hate in comparison. Now you may think, That's okay for some people. It's okay for my priest or my minister to give themselves so completely. It's okay for a missionary to live like that. It's okay for an evangelist to live like that. But listen to what Jesus says. If anyone comes to me, this is for all of us, not just for Christians who sort of do faith for a living. This is what Jesus expects from all of us. Such complete and utter dedication that any other relationship of love we enjoy in life should pale in comparison. Secondly, we need to make real personal sacrifices. Verse 26 again, If anyone comes to me and does not hate even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. What Jesus is saying is that if you want to be his disciple, you need to give up your dreams and your ambitions, give up your pursuit of wealth and comfort, give up your personal goals if they contradict where God wants to take you. And that's a tough call because there are parts of our lives that we want to retain control over, right? Lord Jesus, I'll believe in you and I'll follow you and I'll go to church every Sunday and I might even go to a Bible study group each week. But please don't ask me to give up my career. Don't ask me to give away too much of my money. Don't ask me to leave my house and go and live somewhere else. Don't ask me to get ordained and spend my life in Christian ministry. Don't ask me to leave my friendship group. Lord Jesus, you can have all the other parts of my life But please don't touch this. There was a large crowd following Jesus. And sometimes it's easier to stay in the crowd than to move into the inner circle of disciples because we're too afraid of what God might ask us to give up. But that's what Jesus expects from us if we want to be his disciple. And thirdly, we need to embrace pain rather than pleasure. In verse 27, Jesus says this, Whoever does not carry their cross and follow me 
cannot be my disciple. If you were hearing Jesus' words that day, you would have seen people being crucified before. You would have seen the agony of their death. And here is Jesus saying that to follow him means being prepared to sacrifice everything for him, to embrace the possibility of pain rather than the pursuit of pleasure. It happens time and time again that if people go through a difficult time in their lives or they don't get what they want, they just give up on the faith. It's like God is a genie in the lamp and if he doesn't give us what we want, then he's not worth following. That's what the parable of the sower in Matthew 13 is about. People who give up the faith when things get Get tough or life just doesn't seem to go the way they want it to. But Jesus never promised an easy life. The exact opposite in fact. If you want to be a true disciple of Jesus, you need to embrace the pain of life and work through it with God rather than just trying to pursue ease and pleasure and then giving up on God when he doesn't give you everything you want. And fourthly, we need to put relationship over religion. In verse 27, Jesus says, follow me. That is a call to a relationship, to sit at Jesus' feet and learn from him, to fall in love with him more and more every day, to grow spiritually by imitating Jesus in your own life. Following Jesus is not about just showing up to church when you can fit it into your diary. It's a full-on lifestyle choice. Following Jesus is not sticking with the crowd. It's growing in intimacy with him. Being a disciple of Jesus is a tough call. And in the next few verses of Luke 14, Jesus gives us a few pictures to think about. In verses 28 to 30, he says that if you're going to build a tower, firstly, you need to sit down and work out the cost because there's no point starting to build if we're going to run out of energy and resources. Count the costs before you start because when things get tough later on, you'll then be able to remain committed on the journey. And then in verse 34, Jesus says, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Salt was a really valuable commodity for flavoring, and preserving food. But if it lost its taste, it was no longer useful. And Jesus is saying that the same thing can happen to Christians. We are supposed to be useful to God, helping to shape the world, sharing the gospel with others, working for the coming of his kingdom. But if we get watered down in our faith, or let our faith get contaminated by the ways of the world and the pressures of society, then we're no longer useful for him. It's a tough question to think about. Do you truly want to be a disciple of Jesus? Or do you just want to be a Christian, going with the flow, living out an easy religious life, expecting God to answer all of your prayers without you having to really give back to him? Discipleship is a lifestyle choice. As Jesus says in verse 34, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear.